All right, welcome everybody. I hope you are all having a good night as we get set to begin our last four tournaments of qualification tournament number one for SPL rebound season number one as we will decide tonight our first four pro division teams going into SPL season one and they will be the winners of our four matchups here tonight coming up first fighting for that first pro division spot we have the Chicago sale going up against the Pennsylvania Ball Peen Hammers. So let's take a look at the lineups. For the Chicago sale, they have Q Silver, Walster, Yuri, and now Gubby. Or is it Gub P? Hold on. Did, did I mess that up? Alright, no, no, it's supposed to be B's. Okay. Good. Anyways, they have added Gubby to their roster. I doubt we see him here tonight. To be honest, I imagine that Sale will stick with their starting three. However, the uh, the old guy is back. The old uh, NSL legend. As coming in for the Hammers, they have Cherries B, HZR, Shalisa, and Yertle. The Hammers are looking to try to get the upset over the Sale here and take away that pro division spot here tonight. We take a look at the brackets here to see how each team found their selves in this position. That's not the right bracket. Hold on. There it is. Okay. So for the sale, they got a first round bye and then beat the Michigan Mallards 2-0 to move into the third round. And as for the Hammers, they took out the Gupplings and then got a forfeit win over the Quebec Baguettes. So... Both teams getting ready to fight for that first qualification spot. Who will get it? Are the Mallards playing tonight? The Mallards are not playing tonight. They got knocked out of the tournament. You'll have to wait until maybe tomorrow to see them. Depends on when they schedule their next group stage matches. We'll just wait for everybody to get into the lobby here. Yeah, the Baguettes decided to uh, play that first round matchup in order to try to get more points coming out of this first tournament because points are important. Alright, looks like everybody's in the lobby. Let me get ready ups here and then we can start game number one. Actually, don't get ready ups yet. Cherries is going for a peek. Just waiting on a ready up here from everybody. Waiting on, just, just trying to see if we're still waiting on cherries or not. Alright, the hammers are ready to go. Both teams are ready. Let's get this one underway. I just realized the sale are using the opposite colors than what I expected them to. So I need to fix that on the scoreboard. But here we go. Sale vs. Hammers underway. Like I said, I'm going to go fix the uh, left scoreboard thing real quick. Alright, there we go. 
game number one of our best of three series underway here. Reminder that whoever wins this one will get a pro division spot going into season number one of SPL as Cherry sends that shot off the post after making the save over near the Hammers net. This one is officially underway here. Walster trying to get that pass to Qsiver. Doesn't quite connect on it. Now Walster, another chance here for the sale. Just dumps that puck away. It's going to be Yurdle's turn with it. Try to get that one up to HCR. Qsiver stole, but Yurdle gets it back. Yurdle now from the corner. Scanning it around. Gets out in front. The Cherries. Cherries loses that one to Walster, though, who has an open net. Takes his time and still threads the needle there. Let's take a look back at this one. Just that slow roller. Cherries skates past it. And Walster puts the sail up one to nothing. As your old good patch to HZR, who cannot get that shot on net. Yurdle now, center ice, skating it up. Passing that one up to Cherries. Cherries, good pass out to HZR as the Hammers get on the board here with a good team play. Yurdle to Cherry to HZR, and the Hammers have tied it up one to one. And as Pino states in the chat, you know, both these teams are very much uh, pro potential. Obviously the sale, I think many would argue that they're like the second best team in the league at the moment as Q-Silver sends that one just wide of the net. But you know, as for the Hammers, they are certainly a team that has pro aspirations and you can't blame them. They certainly look like they are of that quality as Yurtle keeping that puck away from Walster here. Passing that one up the boards to HZR. HZR losing that one to Q-Silver. Q-Silver skates it to center ice. Battling for that puck. Can't quite get control of it though. Is now Yurdle on the boards. For the Hammers. Gets it to center ice. Loses it though. Q-Silver good pass up to Walster who again. The slow shot meta. Oh what the fuck? Did... I swear I fixed those. What? Okay. Hold on. I swear I changed those, but I must have fucked it up somehow. Give me a second. Re <laughs> refixing these again. There we go. That's right. Either way, 2-1 to one are score the sale up by 1 here. Is Walster lagging or is this some 200 IQ shit? I, you know, part of me is starting to think it's 200 IQ. I think these are intentional shots, or the shots are intentionally slow. And they have been working out for him. He's found two goals that way. As Yurtle, pass up to HCR. Who will lose that puck to Q-Silver, who will keep it in the Pennsylvania zone here as Cherries. Skating this one up. Trying to hand that one back to Yurtle. Instead, Walster will fight for this puck and get it back behind the ball peen hammer's net. Yurtle gets it back, though. Now on the boards, HCR and Q-Silver. HCR skating this puck up, takes that shot just off the side of the net. But Pennsylvania still has a chance here. Yuri, trying to dump it away. HCR's right there, can't get that shot on net though. As now Q-Silver will take control of this one for Chicago. No, actually Yurtle will steal it away. Try to get that pass around boards, Walster gets to it. Walster hands this one off to Yuri. Yuri skating this puck around. Good pass up to Q-Silver, good pass over to Walster who puts that one in. Great team play from Chicago. Yuri to Q Silver to Walster. A team effort to get that goal on the board. 3 to 1, a two goal lead now for Chicago. As Walster dumps this one into the hammer zone. Yurdle playing with Walster on the boards. Comes away with it. Now center ice. Yurdle, good pass up to HDR, who gets that one over the cherries. Cherry around boards will find HZR, who will not maintain control of that puck. Q Silver will try to get to it. HZR, though. Keeps it. Good pass out to Cherry. Cherry, out to Yurdle. Yurdle and Walster are going to fight here. Q Silver now going to come up and take control of this puck here for the sale and just dump this one into the Pennsylvania zone. HCR, good pass up to Cherry, whose shot is just wide of the Chicago net. With under a minute left here, Pennsylvania finds themselves down by two, three to one in game number one of this best of three series. Reminder, whoever wins this one earns a pro division spot. Is HCR passing that one back to Cherry? Cherry, can't get that pass up to HDR. Whoever wins the series, at least. 
you know, whoever wins this game number one goes up 1-0 in the series, but, you know, they don't win it. Anyways, Yuri dumps that puck away. Walster waiting for it here in the Pennsylvania zone. Can't maintain control of it, though, as we are under 30 seconds left now. Yertle can't maintain control of that puck. Q-Silver gets to it, but we'll lose on the boards here to Cherry. T under 20 seconds left now. The Hammers need a goal here as Cherry. Good pass up to HCR. HCR, though, misses on the shot now. Yertle. Maybe another chance finds Cherry on that pass, but Yuri stops that one, dumps it away. And Wallster will just hold on to this puck here, content to let time run out in game number one. As the Chicago Sale take it 3-1 to one over the Pennsylvania Ball Peen Hammers and take a 1-0 series lead heading in to game number two. If they can win that game number two, they take the series and earn our first Pro Division spot for season number one of Rebound here in SPL. All right. Looks like everybody's all ready up here to start game number two. Chicago Sale took game number one, three to one, and off the faceoff here, Walster looks to put them in the lead, but gets that shot stopped by Cherry. Keeps this one scoreless for Pennsylvania. Ch Q Silver losing that puck to Cherry. Cherry. And that went up to HCR on the boards. HCR will leave that puck behind. Now Wallster has a chance to get it and will. Wallster now passes one over to Yuri. Who has some open ice. Takes that shot. Can't hit it though. Now Yuri back behind the Pennsylvania net. Trying to get it out in front of the net. Finds Wallster. Wallster now. He gets some room. Trying to get a pass back over to Yuri. But it doesn't quite connect. Cherry. Sitting that puck down ice. Q-Silver gets in the way. Q-Silver. Back over to Yuri. Yuri. Up to Wallster. Wallster. Shot wide. Q Silver, scanning it around, maybe going for the wraparound here, gets blocked by Yertle. Yuri, good pass up to Q Silver. Q Silver will not maintain control of that puck, HCR. As a CCP Winter, thank you for the prime sub, very much appreciate it. As HCR passing that one back to Cherry, Cherry losing that one to Q Silver, but getting Q Silver off that puck. As Pennsylvania reclaims control here, Cherry, good pass to HCR, who gets it over to Yertle. Yertle will lose that one, but it'll go right to Cherry. Who again will find HDR. Actually, no, Q Silver will knock HDR off that puck. But Q Silver himself will not be able to maintain control of it. As now Walster will come up and take control. Can't find the shot though. As now HDR. Good pass up to Cherry. Good save by Yuri. As the Hammers are getting chances here. Keeping this puck in the Chicago zone right now. As Walster trying to dump it away. Can't get it past Yertle. We'll dump it back and keep it in Pennsylvania control. Cherries around boards finds HCR, who shot is wide. Yuri now, dumping this puck down. Cherry right there to take control of it. Takes that shot. Q-Silver this time blocking that one. Let's take on Cherries here as the Hammers try to set up again. Dump this puck a bit too far back. However, they will not maintain control here. No, they will. It looked like Yuri had the chance to seal that one away. They couldn't quite get their stick on that puck, though. Q-Silver and Yertle fighting in the corner. Yertle gets out to Cherry. Cherry will not be able to maintain control of that puck. Cherry keeping it away from Walster here. Skating it around. Can't get it past Walster. As he tried to dump it down ice. Now Q-Silver. Trying to get that pass over to Walster. HCR steals it. Yertle now. Can't find control of this puck. HCR now will try to skate this one up. First shot goes off the post. Off the rebound. Yuri makes the save. And the sail keep it scores. Now Cherry. Good pass over to Yertle. Yertle trying to find a pass over to HCR. Doesn't quite connect. Chicago are holding on right now, but they do not have much momentum. As I say that, though, Walster and HCR will fight behind the Pennsylvania net here. Walster will get it out in front, but nobody home. Now Q Server steals that one away from Cherry. Gets it past Yertle, but Walster can't find the shot. Walster's pass out to Q Server, eventually finding him. That's now Yuri. We'll take control of this puck here on the boards. Under two minutes left, Yuri can't find a pass, goes back to Q-Silver. Q-Silver, center ice. Gets around Yertle, tries to find Walster, but Walster can't quite get a stick on it as that pass somehow thread the needle. Yertle, minute, under a minute 40 left now, finds that pass over to HCR. HCR will lose it to Q-Silver. We'll skate it back behind the Chicago Sail net, minute 30. Skating this one up, looking, can't get it past HCR on the first attempt here. HCR now, from the corner. Can't find Yurl on that pass. Walster dumps it. Walster. Pass out to Yuri. Yuri's shot goes past both Cherry and Yurl and in. 
The Hammers try to form a wall in front of the net, but it doesn't work out. Chicago scores anyways. Yuri puts them up by one. With about a minute 15 left here. Walster shot saved by Cherry. Good save. Can the Hammers find a way to answer back here for about a minute left? HCR can't find, or will find Cherry, actually. Who tipped that one towards the sail net? Yuri right there, though. Yuri, good pass up to Walster. Walster gets it past Yertle with a beautiful shot to make it 2 to nothing with under a minute left. 58 seconds on the board. Two-goal lead for Chicago. Will they maintain it and take the series 2-0? And earn that first pro spot. Q Silver passing that pass, passing that one up to Walster. Walster trying to get it back over to Q Silver. HCR takes that shot, but it goes off the post. Q Silver trying to dump that puck. Cherry gets in the way. Yertle now passing this one back, but HCR will not get to it. Instead, it will be Walster who skates this puck around, puts another one in, makes it a three goal lead. With just about 30 seconds left, and that could be it here for the Hammers. Unless they can find something fast here. Walster, good pass over to Q Silver. Q Silver shot off the side of the net. Q Silver now taking that puck off the boards, trying to walk it in. Cherry stops that. But I don't think there will be enough time for the Hammers to finish off the comeback here. As the Chicago Sale will leave game number two victorious and will take this series 2-0 over the ball-peen hammers. Walster missing the open net there. <laughs> As Chicago will be earning that first pro qualification spot with the win here. So the hammers fall and we'll have to try again in tournament number two. However, for the Hammers, can't be mad about their performance in this tournament for sure. Got themselves plenty of points towards that leaderboard position. Which, you know, if they if they can't qualify for pro in the tournaments, you know, those points will be very important. So that ends match number one of the night. However, we still have three more to go as coming up next we have the Columbus Clappers going up against the Orlando Otters to decide yet another pro spot. However, as Void points out in chat, it's not for like another 45 minutes. So, we're going to have a bit of a long wait on this one. I'm going to, you know, just... Play some music, keep the stream running. But it's going to be a very extended break until we see each other again for the start of that Clappers vs. Otters match. Cool. Cool. Alright, welcome back everybody. As we are getting set to begin our next matchup of the night here as we look to decide another Pro Division spot. As coming up next, we have the Columbus Clappers going up against the Orlando Otters. Let's take a look at their lineups here for the Columbus Clappers. They have Meat Sale, Panarin, Rodeo, and Slime, unsurprisingly, coming into this tournament as the favorites, coming into anything as the favorites. It's the Clappers. They've won everything SPL-related ever. It's just the Clappers. So, obviously they're coming into this match as the heavy favorites. They are going up against the Orlando Otters, who have Green, Mace, Speed Chaser, and Tyrant K at their disposal. Tyrant K, obviously a former Columbus Clapper, playing the last two seasons of Slapshot 1 as a Clapper, is now a part of the Otters here, along with Mace and uh, Speed Chaser as the starting three. Can the Otters pull off the upset here? It's definitely going to be a difficult one. As you can look at the uh, the uh, path both teams took to get to this point. The Clappers, again, much like the Sale before them, coming into the second round as first round buys, taking that win over the Salt Lake City Stampede. As for the Orlando Otters, they took a 2-0 victory over the Voodoo, then took another victory over the West Virginia Orangutans to find themselves here with a chance to battle for a pro division spot. We will see if they can pull it off. It won't be easy. 
especially against a team like the Clappers, but maybe they'll be able to at least keep it close. Anyways, just making sure that both teams are ready to go, and we will get game number one of this best of three underway. We look to decide our second Pro Division spot. First one of the night going to the Chicago Sale, as they took a 2-0 victory over the uh, Ball Bean Hammers. That's who they played. Okay. Both teams ready. So let's get this one going once the game loads up here. There we go. Clappers in red, Orlando in blue. Here we go, off the faceoff Mace, dumping this one back to Tyrant K. We'll get this pass back up to Mace. Mace is shot blocked by Meat. Now Mace trying to find Chaser on that pass there, gets blocked. Mace, another chance. Meat Sale with a good save as we are underway. As Meat Sale, good pass to Panarin. Out to Rodeo and Tyrant K coming away with a pretty good save there, actually. On a great passing play from the Clappers. The Tyrant's getting this one up, trying to find Mace. Mace will get that one towards the net. Meat Sale dumps it away. Panarin on the attack here, keeping it away from Tyrant, but Chaser will get to that puck. We'll lose it, though, as Panarin tries to bring it out in front of the net. Tyrant stopping him. Taking control here for Orlando. Clapper's giving Tyrant some room as now Panarin comes up to challenge. Tyrant loses control of that puck, gets it back, though. Can't find Chaser on the boards. As Meat Sale will set up here for the Clappers. Skating it around, looking. We'll just get that one all the way up to Panarin. It's now Rodeo back behind the Orlando net over to Panarin. Panarin will lose that puck as Chaser dumps it back behind the Clappers net. As Meat Sale will once again retrieve it here for Columbus. Clappers setting it up here as Meat Sale getting that pass. Not actually getting that pass up to Panarin. Mace got in the way of it. However, that one going over to Rodeo who will get it to Panarin. Back out to Meat Sale whose shot is wide of the net. Panarin again on the boards here. We'll find Meat Sale in the pass back. Chaser presser, chaser pressuring, but didn't really work out as that pass still got down to Panarin behind the net. Now Panarin out to Rodeo, back to Panarin, back out to Rodeo. Rodeo center ice looking for a shot blocked by Chaser. Chaser trying to get that pass up ice. Meat Sale takes control of it. Meat Sale center ice looking for a shot maybe. Gets blocked by Mace. Meat Sale gets that puck back though. Takes another shot. Got it across the crease. But it does not find the net, and nobody home to put that one away as Panarin shot blocked by Chaser. Orlando just trying to get this out of their zone. Doesn't work. Panarin another chance. Passes it back to Rodeo. Rodeo. On the boards. Just dumps this one into the Orlando zone. Wide of the net. As Tyrant passes this one over to Mace. Mace over to Tyrant. Orlando given some space here to set up. Tyrant K, the former Clapper, trying to set up here for Orlando. Looking for a pass up. Just skating this puck around. We'll find that pass over to Chaser. Chaser shot wide of the net. He goes to Mace. Mace, risky pass back to Tyrant. A very quick one. It bounces off of Panarin. And luckily for them, wide of the Orlando net. It's now Panarin. Back behind the Otters net. Trying to take control of this puck here. And Will will get it passed out to Rodeo. Rodeo center ice. Halfway through game number one. Still no score. As Meatsell looking for a chance. Puts that one on the net. Mace, good save. Mace now. Center ice. Losing control of that puck. Panarin can't get that shot on net. Tyrant K looking. We'll lose it to Rodeo who will get it out in front. Panarin can't get a stick on it though. That one gets sent away. Two minutes left now in game number one. We are still looking for our first goal here as Mace skating this puck up. Trying to find that pass up to Tyrant. Tyrant. Oh, actually no that was Chase up there. Sorry. Who passes it back to Tyrant at the point. Now meet sale. With Chase pressuring. We'll keep it away from Chaser. We'll eventually actually get that puck away from Meat Sale. Try to get it to Mace. Now Tyrant in the corner. With Panarin, Rodeo, and Meat Sale. All three of them on him. Eventually Meat Sale is the one who takes that puck away. And we'll send it around boards to Panarin. That puck finding its way back to Rodeo. Got the blue line here. Skating this puck around. We'll pass it back to Meat Sale. Meat Sale center ice looking for a shot. Skates it up. Takes that shot. Blocked by Tyrant. Chaser now one on one. Gets it past Meat Sale. And puts it into that open net. With a minute 20 left on the board, the Orlando Otters are the one who break the scoreless tie and take a one to nothing lead. Now Panarin off the boards here, looking for an opportunity. Passing this one back to Rodeo. Rodeo, blue line, shot blocked by Chaser. Mason Rodeo going to fight behind the net. Mace passing that one up to Chaser who bounces off the boards. Meet sale. Hand this one over to Rodeo. Rodeo will lose control of that puck here. Mace fighting for it. 
Lose it back to Rodeo. Under a minute left. Can the Clappers find a way to tie this one up? Or will the Otters take game number one? We'll have to find out here as Rodeo finds that pass over to Panarin. Panarin on the boards. Back out to Rodeo. Rodeo shot. Stopped by Mace. Off the rebound. Eventually, Meat Sale able to put that one into the net. As the Otters just could not get that puck sent away. Mace stopped that first shot, but sent that puck right into Panarin. Eventually, Meat Sale is the one who puts that one in the net. And we are tied back up 1-1 one one with 40 seconds left. Meat Sale almost making it 2-1, but that shot just off the side of the net. Orlando now reeling a bit from that goal. Have to recollect here as Mace intercepts that pass. Can't get the shot on net, though. But it's a good play that forces Columbus back into their own zone here. 20 seconds left. Will either team be able to break this tie? Tyrant looking for an opportunity here. It's knocked out that puck by Panarin, who will keep this one in the Orlando zone. Mace just dumping it away. Maybe one last chance for the Clappers here. They set up under 10 seconds left. Meat sale. We'll just hand this one over to Panarin. Panarin on the boards. We'll instead opt to rag it as we will head to overtime. Not very often you see the Clappers play it safe, but they are playing it safe here as we go to overtime in game number one. Meets off the face off, looking for a chance. We'll get control of this puck, skate it in, but lose control of it as Chaser sends it down, ice and in! Just nine seconds into overtime, the Otters take it with the cross ice goal from Chaser. And we'll take game number one, two to one, over the Columbus Clappers. Can they pull off the series upset? MVP chance coming out for Chaser. Getting the game winning goal there. Alright, everybody has readied up in the lobby, so I'm assuming we are ready to go. Once again, game number one going to those Orlando Otters 2-1. An overtime game-winning goal from Chaser. Can the Otters find another win in this series and take down the Columbus Clappers? Guess we'll have to find out here as Rodeo answers back early for the Clappers here. Only 12 seconds into game number two with a nice shot here. Knocking the bottle off the net, making it a 1-0 lead for Columbus. Also, thank you for the 100 bits log. Very much appreciate it. It's now Meat trying to get that one on net. Gets blocked by Chase. Now Rodeo. Passing this one out to Panarin. Panarin back to Meat Sale. Trying to get that one up to Panarin. Tyrant gets in the way of it, though. Now Mace taking his time here in the corner. Rodeo there to pressure, but Mace gets around him. Will lose this puck on the boards, though. Just drifted off his stick. Now Meat Sale. Setting up here for the Clappers. Not the player I really meant to switch to, but it kind of works out here. As Panarin battling of Tyrant near the net. Tyrant. Keeping that puck away from him. We'll try to get this one to Chaser. Chaser will now have to battle with Panarin in the corner. That puck getting sent out to Meat Sale. Mace now taking control of it for the Otters. We'll send it around boards to Tyrant. Tyrant with Rodeo pressuring. We'll lose control of that puck. Rodeo gets it around boards to Panarin. Panarin will not maintain control of it. Mace sends it away over to the other side of the ice. Clappers will maintain control, though, as Rodeo gets this one to Meat Sale. Meat Sale will lose it. Tyrant, pass up to Mace, intercepted. Mace will battle for this puck, but Panarin will battle it away. Now Panarin and Tyrant battling in the Orlando zone. Who will win this battle? Looks like it's Panarin who will send it around boards to Meat Sale. Meat Sale, blue line, takes that shot wide of the net. Panarin again in the corner. This time opts for Rodeo. Rodeo skates it up, takes that shot. Tyrant, good save, and Panarin passes it out to Meat Sale. Meat Sale, pass over to Panarin. Panarin can't get that shot on net. Mace leaves that puck behind. Chaser will have to try to dump it away, but it goes right to Meat Sale. Meat Sale skates it back up, takes that shot wide of the net. Tyrant bumps Rodeo away from this puck, takes control of it, skating it around, loses control of it, tries to get this pass over to Mace. Mace will not get control of it. As now Tyrant will have to fight back with Panarin for this puck. We'll get it away from him. Get this pass up to Mace, who can't hit the shot. Got it past Meat Sale. A difficult shot to make there, though. And couldn't quite find the angle for it. The Clappers keep their lead. Meat Sale, that pass blocked by Chaser. Now Tyrant setting this one up for the Otters. Skating it around. Trying to keep it away from Rodeo, but loses the puck in front of his own net. An unfortunate mistake there. Rodeo just pickpockets him right in front of the net. 
and makes it a two to nothing game here for the Clappers. As we have reached the halfway point here in game number two, Otters took game one in overtime. However, they find themselves trailing in game number two here, two to nothing to the Columbus Clappers. Meet Sales getting this puck around, looking for an opportunity. Passes that one up to Panarin. Panarin can't get that one on net just wide. Panarin again, this time blocked by Tyrant. Chaser going to battle for this puck here. No, Meat Sale will get to it first. Meat Sale takes that shot, can't hit it. Panarin now will lose control of that one. Mace is looking to try to dump this one down ice, but Rodeo is there to stop him. Mace again here on the boards. Keeps it away from Meat Sale. Under two minutes left here. Otter's still trailing by two. Chaser takes that shot just wide. Panarin around boards finds Meat Sale. Meat Sale, Chaser pressuring. Can't do much there. As Clappers just dump it back behind the Otters net. Tyrant K. Gets out in front of his own net. This time doesn't lose it. Gets that pass up to Mace. Mace can't find Chaser on the pass there. Could have been a decent chance for the Otters, but couldn't quite find it. As this one gets dumped back into the Orlando zone. Mace will not get control of that puck. Rodeo, good pass out to Panarin. Good save by Tyrant. Tyrant's going to pressure Meat Sale here and come away with the puck. And to get this one into the Columbus zone, though eventually losing it to Panarin here. We'll set up for the Clappers. Just dump that puck down. Now Rodeo trying to get that pass out in front of the net. Will find Meat Sale, who will just walk that one in. Three to nothing now. Clappers with a commanding lead. It looks like as they are in the driver's seat here, game number two. Set to force a game number three. As Tyrant can't find that pass. Panarin looking again. Can't find Rodeo though. Now Mace sending that one across the ice but wide. Mace will come up and in the corner try to get that pass up to Chaser. Doesn't connect. Tyrant skates this one out. Looking. Will find Chaser but Chaser can't get a stick on it. Panarin trying to send that puck away. Tyrant stops that. Tyrant pass on the Mace in the corner. Mace trying to get that one out to Chaser. But Chaser whiffs on that puck. Tyrant, good job stopping that pass to Rodeo, though. But with under 30 seconds left, I don't think they'll be able to come back from a three-goal deficit here. As it looks like the Columbus Clappers will take game number two. And force game three here. Barring any miracles. As Panarin just skating this puck around, looking. We'll hand it off to Rodeo. Rodeo is wasting time. As game number two will go to the Columbus Clappers, three to nothing over the Orlando Otters. Game three coming up next. Can the Clappers keep up the momentum from game number two and avoid the upset? Or can the Otters find their stride once again and come away with that pro division spot? All right, everybody's readied up. Got fans for both teams in the chat right now as here we go, game three underway. Now off the face off here, Tyrant will not get it away from Rodia. As Chaser will send that puck around, Boards will not find Tyrant. As Panera will get control of it, take that shot, Chaser good save. Now Mace, with control of the puck here, will actually lose control of it as Panarin sets up, finds that pass up to Meat Sale. Meat Sale, try to skate that one out in front, can't quite do it. Chaser trying to dump it away, but it goes right to Rodeo. Rodeo, dumps it back in. Mace will not get control of that puck as Meat Sale skating it around on the boards here. Just looking. We'll send it around, find Rodeo. Rodeo, taking that shot, blocked by Tyrant, dumps it back behind the net. Panarin will take control here for the Clappers, looking. Send it around boards to Meat Sale. Meat Sale, center ice. Finds a good pass over to Rodeo. Rodeo takes that shot off the side of the net. Clappers keep this chance alive here, though. Actually, as I say that, Panarin loses that puck to Mace, and the chance ends. Mace now, skating this one around for the Otters. Sends that one right to Meat Sale on the pass, and Meat Sale walks it in. One to nothing. Clappers take the one goal lead here. Off the steal by Meat Sale. As now Chaser. Try to set up here for the Otters. Gets that pass up to Mace. Mace from the boards. Can't find that shot on net. Rodeo. Skating this one up. 
And pass couldn't find Panarin on the pass there. However, the puck eventually reached Panarin anyways. Now Tyrant will set up for the Otters. Skating this one up. Gets that one over to Mace. Mace, beautiful backhanded shot. Ties it up one to one. What a shot there by Mace, making it a tied game. As the Otters have certainly come to play. Mace looking for another chance here. Gets blocked by Rodeo. Meet Sale. He's taking his time here. Chaser able to take that puck away off the mistake by Meat Sale. However, unable to maintain control of that puck as now Tyrant and Rodeo have to fight on the boards here. Tyrant will come away with it. We'll send it around boards and find Mace. Mace loses it to Rodeo. Rodeo has a chance here maybe. Stopped by Tyrant. Tyrant. On the boards again, battling his former teammate Panarin gets that puck over to Chaser. Chaser's shot blocked by Meat Sale's head. As Meat Sale now, under three minutes left, tied game, skating this one around, finds Panarin. Panarin dumps it back behind the Otter's net. Tyrant with control of the puck here, skates it to the boards, takes the long shot. Meat Sale blocks it. Chaser maybe had a chance, but he ran into his own teammate, and that puck gets sent away. Now Tyrant trying to get that pass up ice. Rodeo steals it, but Tyrant steals it back. The two of them taking the time on the boards here as this puck goes over to the other side. Chaser and Meat Sale going to fight. Meat Sale comes away with it. Meat Sale now. Pass our halfway point here in game number three. All tied up. One to one. Same as the series as May stops that shot there. Winner of this match will get a pro division spot as May's trying to dump that puck down ice. Rodeo gets in the way. Panarin. Pass to Meat Sale. Doesn't connect. Mace. Looking here for the Otters. Skating this puck around. Can't find that pass to Chaser. It goes all the way to Meat Sale. Meat Sale. Looking. Skating this puck around. Skates it up. Takes that shot blocked by Chaser. But the puck will find its way to Panarin. Panarin behind the net. Battling with Mace. Panarin sends it back around. Tyrant now will take control of this puck here. Battling with both Panarin and Meat Sale behind the net. Eventually Panarin will be the one that gets that puck. Pass it out to Rodeo. Rodeo will lose it. But Panarin will get it back in the corner. Panarin battling with Chaser. Chaser just dumps that puck away, and the Clappers have to reset. Meat Sale. Pass up to Rodeo. We'll actually lose control of that puck there. Now Tyrant will take control here for the Otters. Skate this one out in front of the Orlando net. Get that pass up to Mace. Mace trying to get that one out in front of the net. Stopped by Panarin. Panarin sends that one down. Tyrant unable to get control of the puck, but does keep it away from the net. Meat Sale has a chance. Tyrant, good block. Tyrant now skating this puck up. Takes that shot off the post. Had the chance to take the lead and sends the shot just off the post. So close. Panarin now skating this one up with under a minute left. Mace sending that puck down ice. Meat Sale blocks it. Meat Sale now has a chance. Takes that shot. Sent away. Meat Sale still has control of this puck here, though. Skating it around. Finds Panarin. Panarin shot wide of the net. Mace will take control of it here. 40 seconds left. Sends it around. Boards can't find Tyrant. Tyrant will eventually have to steal that one away from Meat Sale, but it goes back to Panarin. Panarin, pass up to Rodeo. Doesn't connect. 30 seconds left. Tyrant skating this one around for the Otters. Will we get overtime? Will either team break this tie? Mace trying to keep control of this puck. Lose it to Meat Sale. Meat Sale, open net! Puts it in. 21 seconds left. The Clappers take the lead. 2-1. to one. Chaser over Skatey. Meat Sale there. And with only 20 seconds left, can the Otters answer back? Mace unable to get control of that puck. Panarin just dumps it away. Chaser looking. Try to get that puck up to Tyrant. It gets blocked. Chaser again on the boards. Battling of Rodeo. Rodeo able to get this puck away. We'll just send it around boards to Panarin. The two of them ragging it back and forth as the Clappers hold on against the Orlando Otters. Take a 2-1 to one, both game and series victory. As despite their best efforts, Orlando could not find the upset here. The Clappers come away victorious. Keep up their major winning streak and earn that second pro division spot. What a series. Orlando making that one a series, and I'm glad that they did. They showed some good fight in that one, but just couldn't come away with the victory there. As once again, the Clappers take it 2-1. to one. So Let me update that. There you go. And now coming up next, we have another 
match with pro division implications as coming up next. Once I figure out how to edit stuff correctly. We have the Penguins going up against the St. Cloud Storm. So that match will be starting in about 10 minutes from now. So we'll be going on a bit of a break. And I'll catch you guys back here for the start of that one. Cool? Cool. Alright, welcome back everybody as we prepare for yet another match to the side, yet another pro division spot. As coming up next we have the Toronto Penguins going up against the St. Cloud Storm. Let's take a look at their lineups. For the Toronto Penguins, they have Donut, Cactus, Lemon, Bond, and Panther. As their four, most likely going with Cactus, Lemon, Bond, and Panther as their starting three tonight. They will be going up against the St. Cloud Storm, who have K Spire, Seppi, Super Duper Kyle, and Lazy Trout. This should be a very even matchup coming into the night. I figured that this would be the most even matchup of the night. Maybe uh, Clappers vs. Otters proving me wrong in that category. However, this is definitely, as Pino points out in chat, you know, this is two teams full of former Pro Division players. So both these teams are pro division caliber, so this should be a very interesting matchup. And to look at how both these teams got to this spot, let's take a look back at their bracket. For the Toronto Penguins, they beat the Atlanta Terror and then went on to beat the Oklahoma Exotics to find themselves in this spot. As for the Storm, they took a forfeit win over the Tadpoles and then beat the Outlaws 2-1. The Outlaws were able to get a match off the Storm. However, they held on and found their way here against Toronto to decide this pro division spot. Anyways, we're just waiting for everybody to get into the lobby here and then we will get this one going. So uh, while well, we wait, uh, how about them Steelers? Getting just demolished right now. You love to see it. You love to see it. Big Ben washed up. Nothing greater. It looks like everybody's in the lobby. So once I get a ready up from both sides, we will get this one going. All right, looks like both sides are ready. Man, that, that charge was timed perfectly. As we get this one underway here, Toronto in red, St. Cloud Storm in blue. As Super Duper Kyle's getting this puck up, we'll find that pass to Case Buyer, who can't quite get the shot on net. Now Panther skating this puck up, looking for a shot, and will hit it with that top corner shot, putting the Penguins up one to nothing. In that one pass, Super Duper Kyle and in, and Toronto takes an early lead here in game number one. Reminder that this is a best of three series, and reminder again that this is for a pro division spot. <laughs> and as Donut says, no matter who, whoever wins, the Smokers win. As, um, I think almost everybody except Panther is a former Smoker on the ice right now. So, Donut's not mistaken. <laughs> As Panther trying to get that pass to Lemon Bond, doesn't connect. Lemon Bond now trying to get that one down to Cactus, doesn't quite work out. Now Panther on the boards. Again, trying to get that one to Cactus. This time K-Spire comes away with it. His shot blocked by Panther though. K-Spire 
Shot blocked by Panther again as Panther's setting up here for the Penguins. Skinning it around. Passing that one down to Lemon Bond. Lemon Bond losing control of that puck though. Seppi just going to walk that one in off the mistake. We'll see this one again here. Lemon Bond with a swing and a miss giving Seppi a perfect chance to just take that puck. Walk it into the open net. MVP chance either to insult Lemon Bond or to uh, praise Seppi. As it's one to one here. Super Duper Kyle was able to find that pass to Case Spire. Now Panther stole it away. Got a good pass up to Lemon Bond. Lemon Bond out to Cactus. Cactus on the boards here. Loses it to Super Duper Kyle. Kyle skating this puck around. Skating it up. Passing that one over to Case Spire. Case Spire. Blue line puts that one in. As the St. Cloud Storm take the lead here. Two to one. Over the Toronto Penguins. Yeah. So... Here's the thing, to raise the MVP volume, it would raise the volume of all the other, like, playable sounds. To to edit that, I need to, like, go and edit the actual audio file, like, off-stream at some point. Which you're right, I should do, and I'll probably just, like, do that tonight, if I remember to do it, but... As Cactus trying to get that shot on net, Kyle sends it away. It's on a tab, but, I mean, like, all, all the other sounds would come from that tab. Also, this isn't, like, a Streamlabs thing. This is, like, this is a separate, like, uh, script that I'm using, like, outside of Streamlabs. Like, I have part of it set up in Screen Labs, but it's, like, its own, like, script. As Lemon Bond passing that one up to Panther. Panther, that shot gets sent away. Esepi now trying to get that pass. It goes past him, though, and to Lemon Bond. Lemon Bond sending that one out in front of his own net. Risky. Panther will take control of it here. Like, no, I know how I need to increase it. I just, I can't do it, like, well on stream. As, Pan as Lemon Bond trying to get that one to Panther. Cactus trying to take that shot. Gets sent away. Seppi. Can't find that shot on net. This one gets sent around. Boards here to Cactus. Storm still hold a 2-1 to one lead here. Minute 40 left in game number one. Best of three series. It's now Kyle. Getting that pass back behind the St. Cloud net. Trying to skate it up here. Losing it to Panther. Lemon Bond now. And that one up to Cactus. Cactus can't get that one on net. Case fire. Getting this one up. Taking that shot just wide of the net. But that one will bounce over to Seppi who will hand that one off to Kyle. Kyle. Pass back out to Seppi. Seppi looking for another chance here for the Storm. From the board. Just skating this puck around. Maybe going for the wraparound here. Has a chance at it. But Panzer seals the puck away. Under a minute left. Penguin's still down by one. Lemon Bond's pass up to Cactus. Stolen away by Case Spire. Case Spire's shot. Blocked by Panther. Panther can't get that pass up to Cactus. Lemon Bond can't take control of it. Kyle dumps this one back by the Toronto net. Lemon Bond. Around boards. Finds Panther. Panther. Takes control of that one. Pass up to Cactus. Cactus weak shot. Stopped by Kyle. Super duper Kyle taking his time with that one here. As we approach 30 seconds left. Penguin's still down by one. Panther going to get a chance with it here. We'll send it around. Boards up to Lemon Bond. Lemon Bond over to Cactus. Cactus back out to Panther. Panther now trying to get that pass up to Lemon Bond. It gets blocked. Under 20 seconds left. Panther. Setting up here again for the Penguins. Just skating this puck up. We'll take that shot. Case by our good block. 10 seconds left. Panther looking for an opportunity. We'll lose it to Seppi. Seppi sends that one down. Ice Lemon Bond will try to send it away. But instead, Seppi will put in the dagger for the St. Cloud Storm. Getting his second goal of the game, making it 3-1 to one and giving the St. Cloud Storm the Game 1 victory. MVP chance for Seppi. As he comes away with the first and third goals in this one for the St. Cloud Storm. As they take Game number 1, 3-1. to one, And move up 1-0 in the series. Just a win away from a pro division spot. Can they find it? Seppi built different.
All right, both teams ready? We'll get game two underway. Off the face-off here, Panther and Seppi. That puck will actually find its way to K-Spire. On the boards. Scanning it around, tries to get it out in front of the net. Seppi tries to put that one in. Lemon Bond, good save, though, and we have started game number two. As Panther, good shot. He gets sent away by Super Duper Kyle. Seppi now, good pass over to K-Spire in front of the net. K-Spire can't find that shot just wide. Panther can't quite get that pass up to Cactus. Again, the St. Cloud Storm took game number one, three to one over the Toronto Penguins and come up to an early one to nothing lead off a good shot from Case Player here. It's getting that one out in front of the net, putting that one over Lemon Bond Stick and in. The Storm go up early one to nothing. Seppi bouncing that one off the boards. Can't get control of it here. Actually, get control of it back here in the Toronto zone. Try to force that one in, but it gets blocked. Lemon Bond now pass up to Cactus. Cactus. Wider than that. Super duper Kyle skating this puck around here from the corner. Puts that one out in front of his own net, but luckily for him, no penguins were there to take advantage of it. This time, Panther knocks him off the puck, but couldn't find a shot as Seppi sends that one down ice. Wider than that. Case fire. Will not maintain control of that one. Panther will take it, get it to Lemon Bond, who will get it over to Cactus, who will not find anybody on that pass there. Kyle dumps it. Lemon Bond again. This time, the Panther. Panther on the boards. Scanning it around, trying to find the pass to Cactus. It gets blocked by Seppi. Panther again. Around boards, finds Cactus. Cactus can't maintain control of it. Panther, good pass out to Lemon Bond. Shot just wide. Lemon Bond, another opportunity. Blocked by Seppi. Panther. Out to Cactus. Cactus from the boards. Can't find that shot. Toronto keeping this chance alive, though. Lemon Bond to Panther. Panther. Wrap around, maybe. Taking his time here. Going for the wrap. Gets blocked the first time. And Case Buyer makes the save on the second. However, Toronto keeping this one in the St. Cloud zone. Panther, shot wide. Cactus can't get that puck. It goes over to Lemon Bond. Lemon Bond on the boards. Battling for this one. We'll get it back to Cactus behind the net, who will find nobody on that pass around. This one will go back to the Toronto zone here as they reset up. Panther, losing that puck to Seppi, actually, who just steals it away. Seppi now going for that wraparound. Lemon Bond stops it. Panther. Getting this one up, one-on-one -on -one against K-Spire. Trying to get that one up to Cactus. Cactus now will get it away from Super Duper Kyle. And hand it off to Lemon on the boards. Lemon Bond skating this one up. Trying to find Panther on that pass, and will. Panther skating that one in, loses it to K-Spire. Halfway point here, Storm up by one as Panther puts it off the post. Gets another chance from the pass from Cactus, but can't put it on net. Cactus again missing. On the shot there, Penguins getting so many chances, but they can't find anything as Cactus trying to walk it in. Gets blocked. Lemon Bond again, this time blocked by Seppi. At the blue line, Case Buyer takes the puck away. Skating this one up here. Panther takes it back. Two minutes left. Panther center ice, pass to Cactus. Kyle, good save. Cactus around boards, finds Lemon Bond. Lemon Bond trying to go back around to Cactus. and said Case Buyer's there. Cactus steals it away from him. Trying to get that one back to Panther. Seppi will take control of it, but Cactus gets that puck again. Can't put that shot on net. Kyle trying to dump it away. Goes right to Lemon Bond. Lemon Bond gets blocked by Seppi on the shot. Now Panther's turn with the puck here. Seppi trying to pressure. Panther keeps control of it. Seppi again pressuring. That one bounces off of Lemon Bond. And luckily for the Penguins, not into their net. Lemon Bond trying to get that pass to Panther, but Case Buyer gets in the way. Case Buyer gets it around boards to Seppi. Seppi and Cactus. Cactus will send that puck down ice, but Kyle will be there to take control of it for the storm. Send it around boards to Seppi. Seppi loses it to Panther. Kyle, again, trying to get control of this puck here as Cactus goes for the wraparound. Case Buyer stops it. About a minute left here, still up by one. Can the St. Cloud Storm take game number two and the series? As Case Buyer loses control of that puck to Cactus, Cactus gets it to Panther. Panther. Keeping this chance alive for Toronto. Gets it back to Cactus, who gets it out to Lemon Bond, but they can't get it in, and Seppi sends it away. Seppi again coming up on the four check. Keeping it back behind the Toronto net here. Lemon Bond with the swing and a miss. Penguins rattled. Seppi trying to get that pass out. Cactus will take control of it. Cactus is shot wide of the net. Panther gets it out in front. Seppi, good stop. 30 seconds left. Lemon Bond handing that one back to Panther. Panther. 
Maseppri pressuring. Panther gets it away from him. Takes that shot. Case Buyer blocks it. Cactus. Keeping this one in the St. Cloud zone here as Kyle sends it around to Case Buyer. Case Buyer looking to dump it away. Lemon Bond gets in the way. Lemon Bond passes that one down to Cactus. Cactus from behind the net. Ten seconds left. Seppi trying to get it out. Panther gets it out front. Lemon Bond can't get it in. Case Buyer with the saves. Panther one last chance maybe. Looks for a shot. Can't get it off. And the St. Cloud Storm survived the Toronto onslaught one to nothing. Three saves from Case Buyer, three saves from Super Duper Kyle. The St. Cloud Storm take the series 2-0 and will move on to the pro division. What a game. The Storm just with a brick wall in their net somehow hold on here and take that victory over the Toronto Penguins. Two to nothing in the series. One to nothing in game number two. They're just camping. <laughs> As coming up next, our last match of the night, still a while away. As coming up, we have the Camels going up against the Yosemite Grizzlies. However, it is a good 45 minutes until that match starts. Now if Camels get pro, I'll die. <laughs> so, plenty of time. Until that one. So if you want to go watch the Pittsburgh Steelers get their asses beaten, you certainly can. Or do whatever you really want to do. But make sure to be back here by 10.30 to watch that next matchup. I'll just keep the stream running. Go on that long extended break. And get you guys back here for the next one. All right, everybody. Welcome back. We have one last match to go tonight. As our break is finally over, is coming up next for our last Pro Division spot to be decided tonight. We have the Canada Camels going up against the Yosemite Grizzlies. Let's take a look at the lineups. For the Canada Camels, they have Endrick, Kuznestovsky, Pooh Balls, and Rec at their disposal. For the Yosemite Grizzlies, they have Random Player, Bombs, Darnell and Wendy's cashier. For the Grizzlies, they were a team that was expected to find their way to this matchup. At least I feel like they were expected to. However, the Camels are definitely not the other team that people thought would be on be uh, meeting the Grizzlies here in this bracket. Let's take a look at the bracket to see how this all transpired for the Camels. No offense to them, but they basically got a free ride to this matchup getting forfeit wins over both the Winnipeg Wrath and the Brooklyn Bandits. As for the Yosemite Grizzlies, they took wins over the New York Cleavers and Cowtown Guppies to find their way into this one. So, just waiting on the Grizzlies to get into the lobby here and then we can get this one going. Should be interesting to see. Again, you know, Camels, they may have gotten a, you know, free ride here, but, you know, they still have the chance to prove themselves here. And, you know, if they can beat a team like the Grizzlies, who I think are a pro-level team, then I think that's, that's proof enough. They deserve the spot, so we'll see if they can earn their way in tonight. Wait on everybody here. And by everybody, I mean we wait on the Grizzlies. And they're in the lobby. Look at that. Right on cue.
everybody. Still just waiting on everybody to get ready here. Also, uh, it looks like we have stuff prepared to potentially show off the groups after the, or the groups for the next tournament after this match is done. Potentially. The, the graphics might break if a certain team loses. Anyways. <laughs> how do, how, oh, how do I tune it out? I don't hear it on my end. It, it, it doesn't play for me. It plays for you guys. I hear nothing. It's completely silent right now on my end. Alright. Both teams are ready. Let's get this one going. All right, here we go. Camels versus Grizzlies. And off the faceoff here, Endrick going for a shot blocked by a random player. Endrick trying to get this one out in front of the net. Looking for a chance. Gets this one out to Pooh Balls, whose shot is sent wide by a random player as this one is underway. As Bomb's putting that one towards the net. Rec Rec gets in the way. Dumps that one down. Goes right to Wendy's. Wendy's shot off the side of the net. It'll be Endrick's turn with the puck. Endrick here for the Canada Camels. Camels in red. Grizzlies in blue as Wendy's gets that pass out to Bombs. But good save by Wreck. That was a great passing play there by the Grizzlies. But Wreck got right to it as Bombs sends that shot wide. Now Bombs at the blue line here. Losing that puck to Pooh Balls. Pooh Balls trying to get that shot on net. Can't find it. Pooh Balls now. Handing that one out to Endrick. Endrick losing control of that puck to Random Player. Random Player skating it up. Looking. Loses control of it, but it'll go over to Wendy's. Wendy's now pass out to Bombs, who puts that one in. What a shot. Here on the one-timer from Bombs. Let's take a look back at that one. Putting it right over Rec Rec and in. And the Grizzlies take a one to nothing lead. It's off the faceoff here. Pooh Ball is just trying to walk that one in. Gets blocked. Now Rec Rec. We'll lose control of it as well. A bit sad not to see Kuznestovsky on the ice. I was practicing saying that name for quite a while. As Bombs now skating this one up, looking for a chance. Loses that center ice here. All right, pass that one to random player. Rec Rec gets in the way. This puck will go back here to Endrick. Endrick trying to send it down ice. Goes right to random player. Random player, good pass to Bombs. Bombs hands it off to Wendy's. Wendy's will not maintain control of that puck. The Camel's getting set up here. Endrick can't get that pass to Pooh Ball. Balls, Bombs gets in the way. Now Wendy's out in front of the net. Bounces off a poo ball stick. And Endrick has to send that one away. And now that one bouncing off of Wendy's. But slow enough that Wendy's can come back to it and keep it from the net as a random player. Good pass out to Bombs. Good save by Rec Rec. Rec Rec already making a couple of good saves there as Bombs can't finish on the wraparound. Had a chance at it. Now random player. Send that one around. Boards finding Wendy's cashier. Wendy's will lose control of that puck. Endrick looking. Trying right, to dump that one down. Ice couldn't quite do it. Rec Rec now. We'll lose control of that puck here. Everybody clicking their sticks against the ice as Bombs passing this one back to random player. Actually, no, Bombs will hold control of it. Hand it off to Wendy's this time. Now, Wendy's. Pass up to Bombs. Blocked by Endrick. Now, Rec Rec at center ice battling with random player. We'll pass it back to Endrick. Endrick will take the shot. Gets blocked. Second chance wide. Wendy's now gets a pass Poo Balls, skates this one up, takes that shot. Endrick, good use of the face to stop that one. Try to get that pass to Poo Balls, doesn't quite connect. Poo Balls now, back over to Endrick. Way wide on the shot there. Now Wendy's, pass gets tipped by Endrick, but it'll go over to random player regardless. We'll get that one to Bombs. Endrick, good stop. Camel's playing some pretty good defense at the moment. Keeping this one close so far. T under two minutes left. Only down by one. As a good pass by Ball or Wendy's to Balls, but good save by Endrick. 
coming back and stopping that shot. Camels keep it a one goal game as Bombs from the corner loses control of that puck. Bombs gets back to it. Endrick makes the save though. Skating this puck around. Just dumps it. Wendy's with control of it. Skating it around. Skates it up. Can't find random player. Endrick sends that one away with authority. Now Wendy's will pass this one over to random player on the boards. Random player. Shot blocked by Rec. Rec will just stop dump it as Wendy sends it around Endrick stops it can't find that shot on net Wendy's now losing that puck to Pooh Balls Pooh Balls loses it back to Wendy's Wendy skates out in front of the net gets blocked by Endrick Wendy's center ice takes that shot wide Wendy's Control the puck here under 50 seconds left. Passing that one up to random player. Random player can't get the shot off. Wendy's looking. Will lose control of that one. Endrick just wide of the net. As now Pooh Balls gets that one off the boards. Takes that shot. It gets blocked by his own teammate on the shot there. 30 seconds left here. Can the Camels find a way to tie this one up? Pooh Balls on the boards. Can't find a pass out in front of the net. Random player losing that one to Bombs. Rec Rec takes that shot. Wendy's good save. Wendy's pass it to Bobs off the side of the net. 15 seconds. Rec Rec trying to get control of this puck here for the Camels. That one goes out to Wendy's. Pooh Ball sends it away. Wendy's again just dumping this one back to random player. Random player just going to try to rag this one against the boards. I would imagine Camels trying to pressure. Random player unable to dump it away. However, waste enough time regardless. And game number one will go to the Grizzlies. one to nothing over the Canada Camels. Who arguably kept it much closer than anybody expected. Six saves as a team, keeping that one a one goal game. Q Silver, very, confer very uh, concerned about the performance so far. Just going to make sure Grizzlies are ready as they are switching in Darnell for random player. For game number two. Now the last time they had Darnell come in for a player, that was for bombs against the Cowtown Guppies. They lost that game. It was a high scoring affair. I think it was something like six to four was the final score of that one as bombs puts one in four seconds into game number two. As the Grizzlies take an early one to nothing lead. Sticks clicking against the ice all around as Wendy's now takes control of this puck here for the Grizzlies. Takes that shot. It gets tipped away by Endrick. Bombs now. Looking for a chance here. We'll lose control of that puck. Pooh Ball's trying to get control of it. It'll get sent back to Rec, who sends that shot wide. Rec Rec looking to try to get this one away from Darnell, who just skates it around the boards here. We'll try to get that pass up to Wendy's. We'll connect. Now Endrick trying to get it towards the net. Wendy's out in front. Maintains control of it. Skates it around now. Looks for a shot. That shot blocked by Endrick. Around the boards, Darnell. We'll get control of that puck. Good pass to Wendy's. Can't get that shot on net, though. Just wide. As Wendy's gets it back to Bombs. Bombs center ice. Looking for an opportunity. Skating this one around. Gets it to the blue line. Skates it in. Trying to get that pass out in front of the net. Endrick stops it. Bombs again looking for an opportunity. Rec Rec keeps the puck away from him. And we'll send it around boards to Pooh Balls. Pooh Balls. We'll lose it back to Bombs. We'll get that one back out to Wendy's. Center ice. Wendy's loses it. Gets it back here though. Pooh Balls stops that pass. Skates it up. Can't get it past Bombs. Bombs looking for another opportunity here. Blue line. Pooh Balls own goals it. E Z. Well, it's the first goal for the Camels, just against the raw net, as they make it two to nothing. As Endrick now, passing this one back to Rec Rec. Rec Rec shot blocked by Bombs. Pooh Balls now. Keeping Bombs from getting a shot off here, so good defense, but Bombs eventually able to get that puck back. Now Pooh Balls steals it back. Can't find a way to get it out of the Canada zone. Camels now down by two. As Wendy's will take the handoff there from Bomb, skate it up the boards, look for a chance. Maybe just going to go for the full wraparound here. 
But instead, Pooballs bumps him off the puck. Now Bombs will take control of it at center ice. Look for an opportunity. Can't get one off. Bombs skates it back. Tries to get that pass to Wendy's. It goes all the way to Pooballs, who takes that shot blocked by Bombs. Now that puck bouncing off of somebody's stick there and just off the post. Wendy's good pass out to Bombs. Good save by Endrick, but Rec Rec leaves the puck behind. The Swain and a miss. Three to nothing. As well, game number one was a close affair. It looks like game number two is very much solidly in the hands of the Yosemite Grizzlies. As Bob's losing control of that puck here. Pooh Balls getting control of it, trying to get that one towards the net. Endrick sending it around boards, finding Rec Rec, who tries to get the pass to Pooh Balls, but it doesn't connect. Rec Rec again, sending that shot wide. So we're past the halfway point here in game number two. Three nothing our score. If the Grizzlies hold on to win this one, they take the series and take our final pro spot of the night. As Wendy tries to dump it, Endrick gets in the way. Now Pooh Balls would control the puck here on the boards. Loses that one to Darnell. Darnell looking for a shot wider than that. Now coming up next here, Wendy's on the boards. Passing it back. We'll find Darnell. Darnell sending it around boards. We'll find Bombs. Bombs skating this one up. Looking for a shot. It's wide. Now Wendy's gets control of that puck. Looking for a shot of his own. From in the corner. Passing that one back out to Bombs. Bombs center ice. Shot wide of the net. Into the corner. Now Pooh Balls looking. Trying to get that pass up to Rec Rec. Doesn't connect. Bombs. Skating this one back. Just skating it around here. Has plenty of room. Takes that shot. It goes off his own teammate's head. But the Grizzlies are wasting plenty of time here. And time is of the essence for the Camels right now. As the Grizzlies make it 4 to nothing on that shot from Bombs. And pretty much secure game number 2 in their favor. As Wendy's will get another one on the board here. Five to nothing. Here's the blowout everybody was expecting. The Camels trying their hardest on this one. Just couldn't quite come away with it. It looks like the Grizzlies will, like I said, take this one here. However, they will find a goal at least. As Pooh Balls have a nice shot here from the blue line. Making it 5-1. to one. No, maybe it's comeback time. 5-2? <laughs> to two? Okay, hold on, hold on. Maybe we shouldn't count them out quite yet. Hendrick with the goal off the face-off. Hendrick again. Now this time gets blocked. Oh, maybe, maybe. Hands it off to Rec Rec. Rec Rec looking for an opportunity. Can all three get a goal here? Bombs keeps it away <laughs> in front of the net. Rec Rec has a chance. Come on. Gets it over to Pooh Balls. Gets it out to Endrick. Shot blocked by Wendy's. Never mind. <laughs> Actually had a lot of chances there. None of them fell, however. As with time winding down here, this will be a Grizzlies win. They will take the series. 2-0 against the Canada Camels and will earn our fourth pro spot of the night. Darnell won't put that one in. Neither will Bombs. Okay. 5-2, to two, our final score. The Canada Camels take it. Or not. Sorry, the Canada Camels. Yeah, somebody Grizzlies will take the series 2-0. Don't listen to me. And that will do it here for tournament number one. Your, hold on, give me a second. Here are your four pro division teams leaving tournament number one. You have the Columbus Clappers, the Chicago Sale, the St. Cloud Storm, and the Yosemite Grizzlies. Have qualified for pro here tonight. 
we take a look at the full list right now, we still have ten, or we still have six spots remaining here in Pro. Of course, some glaring omissions from this list at the moment are the Brooklyn Bandits, the Toronto Penguins, and the Quebec Baguettes. So it'll be interesting to see who will walk away from tournament number two with a pro division spot. Sale should be first. I didn't make the fucking graphic, Yuri, okay? Also, I'm pretty sure the graphic... Well, actually, no. That's not alphabetical order. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways. Don't go anywhere, though, because as well as showing off this, we also have groups to announce. Because we already have all the groups ready for placement tournament number two. So let's try to get through them as quickly as possible. Coming in here, group number, or group A, for the qualification tournament number two is the Toronto Penguins, the Ocean City Typhoons, and the Ottawa Drinkers. Once again, for Group A, for Qualification Tournament number two, we got the Orlando Otters, the, or not the Orlando, the Toronto Penguins, the Ocean City Typhoons, and the Ottawa Drinkers. Try to keep it going quickly here. Group B, we have the Orlando Otters, the Tri-City Poloskis, and the Queen City Craft. For Group B, once again, the Orlando Otters, the Tri-City Poloskis, and the Queen City Cracked for Group C here. We have the Pennsylvania Ball Peen Hammers, the Houston Hot Boxers, and the Biz Mark Beginners. Once again for Group C, the Pennsylvania Ball Peen Hammers, the Houston Hot Boxers, and the Biz Mark Beginners. From this point onward, we have groups of four as coming up first. Okay, that doesn't work the way I thought it would. All right. Coming up first here in Group D, we have the Canada Camels coming off that loss against the Yosemite Grizzlies, the Boston Baked Beans, the Columbus Chill, and the Pittsburgh Spinners. The Spinners, a new sign-up in between the two tournaments. The Columbus Chill, obviously Nasher's team. Not going to even put in an easier group this time, to be honest. <laughs> still, still just... Not going to be too easy for Nashi. As coming up next, Group E, we have the Brooklyn Bandits, the Boston Bagels, the New York Garys, and the Yosemite Cubs. The Cubs, a new sign-up in between tournaments here. The uh, Grizzlies B team. It'll be interesting to see how they do here in Group E. New group and graphic. Well, luckily I haven't saved that one yet. I am literally going to the Discord channel and like pulling all these out as we talk here. In group F, we have the Quebec Baguettes, the Philadelphia Light Emitting Dangles, the Hershey Guitars, and the Edmonton Dragons. Philadelphia, a team that kind of surprised a bit in uh, the first qualification tournament. Kind of the same with the uh, Boston Baked Beans as well, but... Philadelphia, a team that surprised me at least by kicking my ass. So it'll be interesting to see how they do here in Group F. See if they can make it out of the group again and maybe make it farther into the bracket. Coming up next, Group G, we have the Michigan Mallards, the Northern Hills Voodoo, the Can Canadian Bald Boys, and the Columbus Clompers. Obviously the Columbus Clappers. Uh... Qualified for a pro division spot. However, they got their new B team, the Columbus Clopper, Clopper, the Clompers, bleh, coming in here for Group G. Moving on, we have Group H, and for Group H, we have the Cowtown Guppies, the Philly Ferrets, the Denver Acclimate, and the New York Slappers. So for Denver. Denver's a bit of a weird story here, but you because you might be going, hey, wasn't there a team called the Brookline Acclimate? There was. That team disbanded, and a couple members from that team have now joined with the Boston Benders and have rebranded to the Denver Acclimate. Why? I don't really know. But 
It'll be interesting to see if they can have a better tournament this time around. Obviously, the Cowtown Guppies, a fan favorite for sure. As the, they are also going to be the favorites of this group here, Group H. Now, coming up next, we have Group I. And for Group I, we have the Atlanta Terror, the New Jersey Noobs, the Soul Cal Cruisers, and the Oklahoma Exotics. Once again, for Group I, we have the Atlanta Terror, the New Jersey News, Noobs, the SoCal Cruisers, and the Oklahoma Exotics. I, I think I think the seeding on this got, like, messed up. I'm assuming that Oklahoma should be the one seed, Atlanta should be the two seed, and then, like, New Jersey and SoCal sp split three and four. Anyways, SoCal unable to compete, really, in the last tournament due to some uh, personal issues for the team. So, hoping that they can have a good tournament here in Group I. Now coming up next, we have Group J. And here in Group J, we have the Portland Porcupines, the Cowtown Tadpoles, the Maryland Ice Orcas, and the Wisconsin Berry Farmers. Now, if you haven't been paying attention on the Discord, the Wisconsin Berry Farmers are CC's team. I don't know why I said it like CC, but they're CC's team. Uh, if you know who CC is, obviously a uh, slap one legend. Was a big part of NSL back in the day. Hasn't really competed in SPL too much, but now gets a chance here in Group J with the Wisconsin Berry Farmers. To be honest, I haven't heard of any of his teammates at all. So it'll be interesting to see how that team does. And of course the Portland Porcupines, a team that, to be honest, I think had a disappointing uh, first tournament, at least in my eyes, for how good the team could be. So maybe they'll be able to bounce back here in Group J. Now coming up next is Group K, which is the Winnipeg Wrath, the New York Cleavers, the Baltimore Slapshot team, and the Bermuda Breakaway. For some reason, named Bermuda Breakaway here in the graphic. Bermuda, a team that was a pretty good-looking team. Honestly, if I had to pick a group of deaths just going through this so far, this would be the Groot. <laughs> because Bermuda has T, has a Brady Boy, has a couple of other players. It's a pretty good team. However, they were unable to uh, play in the first tournament. Had to drop out the Winnipeg Grass, a team that I think is very talented, has a lot of history. The New York Cleavers and the Baltimore Slapshot team. Both teams that you know may not be the most talented, but I've seen them pull off a couple of decent games, so it'll be interesting to see how they do here in Group K. Now coming up next, we have Group L, and in Group L we have the Salt Lake City Stampede, the Cowtown Gupplings, the Pennsylvania Bats, and the Kentucky Karens. Once again, <laughs> and that's a good point. The Stampede and the Karens are once again in the same group. That's wild. Anyways, once again, it's the Salt Lake City Stampede, the Cowtown Gupplings, the Pennsylvania Bats, and the Kentucky Karens. Now for Group M, two groups left to go here. There are there's three Cowtown teams. The Guppies, the Tadpoles, and the Gupplings. Anyways, Group M, we have the New Jersey Minutemen, the Hartford Wolves, the Fairbanks Knuckle Pucks, and the Alaskan All-Stars. The All-Stars, a team that had to forfeit all their matches during tournament number one, being unable to uh, field a full uh, team of three. Sounds like they'll be able to do it this time around, though. So it'll be interesting to see how they do, given the chance to play here. The New Jersey Minutemen, a team that had a pretty decent group stage, but kind of faltered in the bracket, losing to the Arizona Outlaws. Getting another chance at it. We'll see if they can take advantage of that. And speaking of the Arizona Outlaws, we have our last group of the night, Group N. And it is the Arizona Outlaws, the West Virginia Orangutans, the Wisconsin Nemesis Pro, 
and the Nebraska Monsanto Corp. It's your last group for group or for qualification tournament number two. There you go. Oh boy. Not gonna lie, wasn't prepared to have to read off a bunch of groups on stream until like five minutes ago. Here he is, big Wisconsin Nemesis Pro fans. But there you have it. Those are all your groups for qualification tournament number two. And that starts tomorrow. Also, uh, I'm assuming these are going to be posted on the Discord by somebody, probably M-Dub. Once this stream is over, he might be posting them right now. I don't know. Okay, yeah, those have all been posted on the SPL Discord, so if you want to take another look at them, go there. I think the site will also be set up at this point to uh, have you be able to go look at the site and see the groups, and also the point. Let me finish off the predictions here. Yeah, site is good to go as well, so you can either check the Discord or check the site. And of course, if you're one of the captains, get in touch with the teams that you have to play against. Get all those games scheduled, all that good stuff. All right. I'm going to be done for the night. Thank you guys for watching, and congratulations once again. Hold on. Let me, uh... <laughs> congratulations once again to the Columbus Clappers, the Chicago Sale, the St. Cloud Storm, and the Yosemite Grizzlies. as our four teams earning pro spots here tonight. Coming away from qualification tournament number one, victorious. Like I said, the next qualification tournament starts right away tomorrow night, so I'll be back here streaming some more matches for all of y'all. So, stay tuned to the Discord, and I will catch you guys tomorrow night.